We're live to Peter Musafiriatis, who is the CEO and founder of Cultural Infusion, a self-described cultural entrepreneur. Peter, thanks very much for your time tonight. Can I just start off by asking what your reaction was to seeing what's been happening in Afghanistan? Well, my, my first reaction was we had, a, you know, the US, Australia, the UK and a whole lot of other countries that went in there back 20 years ago. They spent literally thousands of billions of dollars were spent in trying to rebuild this nation and it all collapsed literally in a few days. So what does that tell you? And you know, the Taliban were made up of 80,000 soldiers. The, the National Army of, of Afghanistan was 300 soldiers. What does it tell you in terms of the resistance? There was literally no resistance. What does it tell you in terms of what people thought of the coalition in Afghanistan during this time. And, and I think what this says, the message that it sends, is that if you're going to go anywhere, you need to think about the culture of the people. You need to build bridges of understanding. And I know that the US started some of those discussions a few years ago, but they needed to start that right from the onset, the moment they went in there. Look, you mentioned culture there. Can you actually explain for those who may be unaware what the main aspects of Afghanistan's culture actually are? Well, I always like to say, because my heritage is Greek, one of the, um, I suppose, one of the major ethno-linguistic groups that went into that part of the world 2,300 years ago and managed to stay there for a long time were the Greeks, the Indo-Greeks. Alexander went in there around 330 BC, and they, and they stayed there for 300 years. Now, there's been so many other empires since then, and empires before that as well. And, you know, we had the Russians recently. Before that, we had the British in there. Uh, we had, and then the, the, the United States uh, went in there as well. And we thought the United States was going to achieve so much in this short period of time. In 20 years, we thought, well, yes, they can achieve something. But is it a success? Is it a failure? I come to you and I give you all the money in the world, but if I don't develop a friendship with you, if I don't develop pathways of um, cultural understanding, and if I, if I come to this discussion from a, what we call this our own value-centric or this own ethnocentric perspective, which is basically saying that I'm going to uh, initiate this discussion based on my values, on my social norms, on my way of thinking without making some compromise, then peace is going to be pretty, pretty difficult. And, yeah. We've all seen these images coming through of people in some cities in Afghanistan who are welcoming the Taliban coming in, who are cheering them on. What do you think that says about the Afghani, excuse me, Afghan people? Are they just sick of these overseas forces coming into their country? Yeah, so, so when we say Afghani people, uh, you're referring to it in terms of this sort of uh, national concept. But Afghanistan, you might almost want to think of it as a, a nation of many different peoples, a bit like when, you know, uh, Australia was colonised in the 1700s. There was an estimated 700 languages and speech communities that were spoken here uh, or equivalent to something like 324 nations of people. These all had their own ways of thinking, their own culture. So, and we often refer to them as um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people when we talk about First Nations people. We need to start to disaggregate and we need to start to recognise that everyone has a cultural identity that they have an affinity with. So when it comes to, uh, to Afghanistan, you have, I think there's something like 14 major ethnic groups. You know, you have your Pashtuns, there's the Aymak, the uh, Durrani, Hazaras. We, in, in Australia, we have a lot of Haz Hazaras here, uh, Baluch, you know, Baluch, the Baluchi people also in, in North Pakistan, uh, Farsiwan, uh, you have the Nuristanis, the Uzbeks, the Tajiks. So there's many ethnic groups in these um, in this country. And the Taliban, I think, was quite strategic in the last few years in that they were able to uh, think of themselves as being able to represent not just one ethnic group, but a whole range of ethnic groups. And I think that's why they were embraced uh, so, so promptly uh, and we're receiving warm welcomes. Look, there's no doubt there's going to be uh, skirmishes there's, during this transition. There's going to be fallout. 
communities are going to see this as an opportunity to migrate to a different part of the world. And we're seeing this. And Australia is opening its borders. Uh, hopefully, Australia can go beyond, I think it's the 3,000 or 4,500 quota that it's got. Hopefully, it can sort of match what um, uh, Canada's doing, at least in terms of, you know, uh, uh, you know, proportion of population, so maybe along the lines of 12,000 people. Uh, and I think we, I think there's going to be, the international community is going to need to come come together and uh, during this period of transition and start to really um, uh, accept uh, people from Afghanistan uh, to come into their place. But not only just one type of person, I think we need to look at uh, a spread of people from different ethnic groups when we start to open up our borders. All right, just finally, you obviously are the CEO and founder of Cultural Infusion. Can you just tell us a bit about your work and where we can find out about it? Yes, th thank you very much, Leonardo. And uh, my organisation I founded, I suppose, as a response to the impact that uh, globalisation was having on intangible cultures and recognising that since 1989 we've gone into this uh, what you could describe as this super diverse world because of the World Wide Web. And all of a sudden we've had globalisation of values and ethics without globalisation, uh, sorry, globalisation of economics without globalisation of values and ethics. And our aim is uh, at culturalinfusion.org.au. It's to build global harmony through intercultural action. So one of the things that we're trying to do at Cultural Infusion is to better understand humanity, to better understand cultures. And we've developed this tool called diversityatlas.com.au, which is able to provide comprehensive insights into uh, not only the extent of culture, but the type uh, of culture and also a whole range of other demographic dimensions of diversity. Most organisations don't know who they are. And we say that representation is an important aspect of uh, social cohesion, an important aspect of inclusion, an important aspect of equity. So when organisations are delivering services, they need to, to some extent, be able to reflect those communities. And I think what's missing from this discussion is that are organisations understanding these communities from a cultural perspective? Because we don't all see the world through the same lens. We all see the world through a different lens. And I come back once again to the United Nations. And the United Nations states very clearly that 75% of all conflict in the world has a cultural dimension. So whilst diversity is a, an incredible asset, it also is able to provide solutions to being able to find ways to peace. But the only way we can do that is through a measurement approach. And that's what we do with Diversity Atlas. It's being able to really discover who communities are as a vehicle to building um, intercultural competencies. Right, we'll leave it there. Peter Musferi, artist, thanks very much for joining us tonight. Thank you very much, Leonardo. All right.